Hey guys, it's Saria. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is an ear tutorial and it's actually a collaboration. So if you guys caught my previous video where I unboxed my March year of the ear, it is not March. <laughs> where I unboxed my July year of the ear which was Disney mouse themed. Um, so if you guys didn't catch that video, I will go ahead and link it, but we, I participated in year of the year once more. If you guys don't know what that is, it's basically an annual long swap where every single month there's a different theme for creators and we are given a name. It is a no preference swap. I don't really treat it as that. <laughs> I like to look at my people's preferences and make them something that I think that they would specifically really enjoy. But the point of the swap is to be creative and kind of make something unique. Um, so I um, made these ears for my person kind of at their request. They did put in the chat that they were dressing up in an Alice in Wonderland outfit and that they were really hoping for Dormouse ears. So I did the best I could. The Dormouse is definitely a harder character to kind of like focus in on. Um, but I also came up with a new method of making ears that I've never done before and I I haven't seen anyone do it. That doesn't mean that no one has. Um, but it's just, it was new to me and I'm, I'm very excited to share it with you guys. So this method, if you will, it opens up a lot of doors for really any kind of set of ears you want with any character and that's why it made me so excited because if you can get access to a book that you're okay with cutting i know some of you are gonna absolutely hate me in this video then you can pretty much make anything <laughs> so i am going to be showing you guys how i turned this little golden book into a set of ears i did get mine at half price books and i would highly suggest you guys shop secondhand for these books just so that you're one saving money but two kind of reusing something that might be a little bit beat up or worn down um, that other people might just let sit on the shelf. As I said, this video is a collaboration and it is organized by the Siskateers, the same people who organized the actual Year of the Ear swap. Um, so anyone who wanted to was invited to film how they made their ears and post today. So I will link everybody who decided to participate down below so that you guys can check out a bunch of ear tutorials today. And without further ado, we're gonna jump into this tutorial. So starting out, I picked up this book from Half Price Books. It is a little golden book. I really love the art in these books and the paper is the perfect quality for this project. And I'm just gonna show you guys the first step, which is just selecting what image you'd like to put on the ear. Um, I'm just gonna start out with this one of Alice and Dinah in the tree. Now, these are the discs I'm using and it is closest size to the foam and batting template that I have linked below for you guys. So I'm gonna trace that template onto the ear I'm sorry, onto the paper and then go ahead and cut that out. Now for the actual disc itself, you are going to have to cut the bottom of it to make sure that it can form onto the headband better. I, I don't, I don't want to say that this is like an absolute necessity because I do feel like once I show you guys how I attached it to the headband, you could feasibly do that without cutting out the bottom into a curve, but I did not try it that way. I did use a band saw in order to carve out the bottom of it. Um, I think a jigsaw might also work, but a bandsaw is definitely safer. Um, but I definitely think that you could try to do it without cutting the bottom. So obviously you're going to then cut out what you traced with a pair of scissors and just follow your line. I cut right on the line, I would say, and then you are actually going to have to trim it down just a little bit more to, if you want to leave the edges of, I almost said the crust, it's not a sandwich. <laughs> if you wanna be able to see the edges of the bark on your disc. Um, so I'm just trimming it a little bit at a time and then getting it to the sizing that I like before I actually glue it down. Now that I have it sized appropriately, I'm going to start with some Mod Podge. I am using the glossy version, which I think will look so much better on your top coat. Um, but if you only have the matte, I still think that this entire process will work. So the first step is going to be really layering on a thick layer of Mod Podge onto that disc and then smoothing out your image. You do want to use something to kind of squeegee it down. So if you have like a Cricut or something, you can use that little squeegee. I am using, you know, whatever this thing's called, a protractor. I don't know. <laughs> And then I went ahead and folded down my edges on the bottom because I did leave them a little bit long and just smoothed it over with my finger. And then I'm gonna go in for my top coat. Now for my top coat, I am being very, very generous and I did end up doing three top coats just because I know it rains in Florida and if, you know, Kat's wearing these on her head and it 
starts to torrential downpour, I want to make sure they survive. <laughs> so um, I am doing a very, very thick top coat. The key I, for this, you guys, is just going around with your finger and smoothing out those edges and then also keeping your Mod Podge going in one direction. So if you are doing vertical sweeping motions with your brush, keep them vertical. Don't like swirl your brush around or go horizontal all of a sudden. It'll just make it look a lot nicer if you keep your brush strokes going the same direction. So now that that is all on there, I'm gonna let that dry. I did wanna show you guys this. This is my um, second coat on this ear in particular, and I'm just using my finger and I'm going in and really caking it on. Part of the reason I did it this way for the second coat is because I really wanted to make sure that my edges of my paper got glued down really, really well. So I am just going on and really working that Mod Podge onto the edges of the paper. It is very, very important you let the Mod Podge dry between coats though. Um, don't get impatient and like immediately put a second coat on. I would give it at least 30 minutes. Um, Mod Podge does dry very, very quickly, so that's the nice part, but um, I would say 30 minutes between coats just to be safe because you don't want to get bubbles or accidentally like pull the paper up. So I am showing you guys, this is after two coats of Mod Podge and I'm gonna go ahead and do one more just for safe safety. It makes me feel better. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a third coat. The third coat I did do with a brush. Um, this is just to make sure that it looked nice and smooth and again, all in one direction. And at this point, this is just like a extra layer of protection. So I wasn't really worried about caking it onto the edges like the second coat. Okay, full disclosure, this next step was a total bust and I'm leaving it in the tutorial just so you guys can see that I tried something as an alternative, but this did not work. So I knew that these ears would not just glue onto a headband. I knew that they would just rip off because, you know, wood to fabric material, I just knew it wouldn't hold. I didn't trust it to hold. So I was like, oh, felt takes hot glue very well, like does not let go of hot glue usually. So I cut a strip of felt and glued it onto the bottom of the ear and then I tried to glue that onto the headband. It does not work, it ripped right off. The felt also ripped right off the bottom of the ear. So this is a fail, it does not work. I'm saving you some time. And here I am peeling that felt right back off because it did not work. <laughs> How many of you guys saw this and though and was like, Saria, that's obviously not gonna work. Well, we're gonna go in with a tool now. So you are going to need a drill. I am using a quarter inch pilot hole. Um, I'm only gonna drill three holes in each ear and that was more than sufficient in order to do what we need to do here. Um, if you are nervous about this, you guys, I would just practice like this. These discs come in a whole pack. I practiced first before actually going on the ear, but you can do it. I, I know you can, assuming you have this tool. <laughs> Now, as you can see here, I'm putting my ear on the edge of the table and really firmly holding it with my hand and allowing space for that drill bit to go through the wood and not into my table. Um, so that's a very important piece of this. Is just make sure that when you're drilling, you're not gonna hit anything when you go through. So this is what it should look like once you have your three holes. And now I'm gonna show you why that's gonna be helpful. Now, I don't know if it's better to pre-drill these holes before you put the paper on, because as you can see here, some of my paper is like nasty looking where the hole is. So I'm just using this poking tool and I'm just gonna poke it down into the hole. That worked perfectly fine for me. And it looked totally normal when I was done. I, I really thought about like, is it better to drill the holes before you do the book? But I don't know that it would be. I think it's gonna be about the same process no matter what. So once I poked the pages and the edges through and smoothed that all out, now you're gonna need some ribbon. I'm using a black satin ribbon that I get from Dollar Tree and I'm using black because it's going to match the headband and to me that was the most important thing because then you really won't notice this ribbon helping attach the ear. And what you're gonna wanna do is lace this through. You're gonna see me be really stubborn here before I finally just go get some tape and create, you know the part of the shoelace that's like plastic? I think it's called an aglet. I'm gonna make one of those in a little bit because this ribbon got very stubborn by the end. Um, but you're just gonna lace it through all three holes and this is what's going to tie it around the headband essentially. So again, you should have laced it through all three of the holes that you created and then the headband is going to go through the ribbon. I, I don't, I need another word other than through. 
Okay guys, I'm gonna show you on the second ear because I did a better job staying in frame on the second ear, but I'm just lacing through my ribbon just as I did on the first ear, and then I'm using my ear spacing template in order to get the spacing right. But you are still going to glue this ear onto the headband. The ribbon is going to act as a reinforcement. So I am going to first mark where my ear is going on this headband. I don't normally do this step because Normally I'm not having to lace the ribbon around, but I just really wanted to make sure that the spacing was right. So I'm just gonna use a little silver Sharpie and get my ear where I would like it and then just do a little tiny line at the beginning. We're gonna cover this up with flowers in a minute, so it really doesn't matter that there's a little bit of a marking on each side of the ear. But it is really going to help you in the long run. So I'm gonna add a thin line of hot glue from those two lines to connect them and then I'm going to very carefully lace the headband through the ribbon and then firmly hold my ear down on that hot glue. So we're not tightening the ribbon yet and we're not hot gluing the ribbon down yet. This is really just putting the ear itself on the glue the same way you would if you were making any normal ear tutorial I have on my channel. And I'm just gonna firmly press that ear down into the glue and allow it to set and then I'm gonna start kind of tightening my ribbon in a minute, but I'm, I'm gonna show you that step. I'm going slow because this is a, a different method than normal. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna go back to the first ear. I know that's confusing. I'm so sorry, you guys, but I just wanted to make sure that you have the best sight lines. So the ear is like glued down on that normal part that I just showed you. And now we're gonna do just small dots of hot glue and then tighten the ribbon down into that glue. So the important part on this is that you work small segments at a time. So as you can see here, I just did a little dot and then I'm tightening my ribbon down and then firmly pressing it into the hot glue. I'm still honestly doing just a little bit too much hot glue. You don't need a line, you need just a dot. A, a dot big enough for the ribbon to catch on to. And then you're gonna tighten that ribbon. And this is just reinforcing that ear, making sure that it's not going anywhere. And then you have these two tails that you're going to also hot glue down and then trim off your excess. So I'm just making sure that everything is very firmly attached and that my ribbon is tight enough. And then I'm just gonna hot glue down the ends, tap them down and cut off the excess ribbon. I do wanna show you guys this. It did get a little bit of a gluey mess there. I tried to use the little finger protector, but it kept pulling the glue. So I don't know if you should use the finger protectors or not, but I am gonna fix this just by cutting a small strip of black ribbon, the same one I've been using, and just gluing it down on top. That will, one, add an extra layer of reinforcement, and two, cover up the gluey mess. Okay, we only have a couple steps left. So we are going to be doing a flower crown with these in order to show off the images from the book. And I thought it'd be so cute to add little googly eyes to them because obviously the flowers are alive in Elsa Wonderland. So I just found some cute little googly eyes that I had in my craft room. They do sell googly eyes at Dollar Tree. Also the flowers I'm using are from Dollar Tree because I love Dollar Tree flowers. And I just picked out ones that reminded me of the ones in the film. I love the daffodils and the shy little violets and stuff. So I'm using flowers that reminded me of those characters and I'm just gonna glue down eyes where I think that they look best in order to give them kind of a little nose on the flower and stuff and next we're gonna start gluing these flowers down on our headband so I decided to use these two little purple ones in the center they just kind of seem like the showstoppers to me and this is gonna be on the front of the ears and these are the front because the dormouse is on the front as we covered earlier and I'm just adding a little bit of hot glue and then just firmly pressing that down on my headband. I really did wanna add flowers onto the sides just because I thought it gave it a more complete look and it covered up those black ribbons nicely, but it was really tricky to find the right type of flowers. I loved these chrysanthemum style flowers because the blue reminds me of Alice's dress, but they were just too big and they were covering up way too much of the image. So I pulled out some of the teeniest, tiniest flowers I have that are also so pretty and went with the colors on the images. And it didn't take very many of these. You could definitely buy one stem of these at Dollar Tree and do this whole set of ears. So I'm just plucking these off and placing them, making sure that I have enough of them before I start. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and start tacking these down with dots of hot glue.
this is how it turned out and I think it's so stinking cute. I love the little googly eyes and the flowers, but I did want to show you guys another idea that I had. Um, I picked up a teapot at Dollar Tree. This is in the toy section and I painted it to look like the teapot in, from the teacups ride at Disney World, but I just wasn't really in love with this for this particular set of ears. I still just wanted to show it to you guys in case it really spoke to you um, so that maybe you could attempt it. But I did I did paint the whole thing. I just didn't love how it came out. Um, so now we're going to flip onto the back and finish the florals on the back. I'm going to do the exact same thing I did before, but the yellow flowers this time are going to go in the center and then those little teeny ones will go on the edges. And that is the final step in this tutorial. You guys are gonna have to let me know what you thought of these. Would you have done anything differently with them? Or are you gonna take this concept and use it for a different movie? What I love about this is it opens up a wide world of types of ears you could make because there are books on pretty much every Disney movie that exists. So what book are you gonna be in search of? What secondhand store are you gonna be visiting? Or maybe you're even your own personal library. Repurpose a book. You guys are gonna have to let me know what you thought. I do want to include this, even though I just gave you guys like a final look at the ears. One of the mouths on the dandelions, it looked like he was like screaming. So I am adding a little bit of hot glue and just kind of pinching it closed. I really do like to include all the details of the tutorials for you guys, just so that I'm hopefully saving you some time. But this is just me tacking it down and then that will pretty much do it for these ears. You guys are gonna have to let me know what you thought of these in the comments below, and I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching.